What's up, SEO legends? Welcome to part two of the full Surf SEO tutorial series. In this video, we're gonna talk about the SERP analyzer. Let's get right into it. By the way, all parts of the tutorial are gonna be linked in the description. So first things first, we wanna go right into the SERP analyzer and we wanna type in that keyword that we're interested in analyzing. I'm gonna use the same example as the last video, keto coconut cream pie and there's a few settings to talk about so the location settings for the SERP analyzer are pretty good we can select cities which is great for local SEO but right now I'm just interested in targeting the whole of the United States uh, I'm gonna stay with desktop most of these settings are fine and I'm gonna run the SERP analyzer. What does the SERP analyzer do? It basically gives us a breakdown of all these different on-page factors and how they correlate to the positioning in search results for a specific keyword. So this is really interesting. But let's break down the SERP analyzer because I know there's a lot going on here. There's three main sections that we wanna take a look at. So the first one is the specific graph. The second one is the left bar down here, all the different factors. And then we have this bottom section that we're also gonna talk about. So first things first, this graph, this is the main attention grabber of the SERP analyzer. So in this graph, we're gonna see the relationship between whatever factor we pick on the left side and the position in the search result. So there's a lot of things we can do with this graph, more on that later, but that's basically what we're seeing with the graph. On the left, as I said, there's a variety of different factors that we can go in, we can select, we can see what the relationship is between that specific factor that we're picking and the right rankings in the search results. So there's a lot of different factors that we can select. And the important thing that we wanna take a look at here is these specific green bars. So the more green bars and the fuller those green bars are, the higher the correlation. So it's important to note, correlation does not imply causation. Correlation is merely telling us that there's a positive trend. It's giving us a guide in terms of what we should focus on for our on-page and how those on-page factors are influencing the search results. And finally, guys, down here, so there's a lot of different tabs that we're gonna look into in just a little bit, but the main thing that we see here are the search results. So this is a full breakdown of all the people that are ranking in the correct order, and we have a variety of different things here. So we have the content score, which is something that we talked about in the last video. We have the domain score, which is an internal surfer SEO score that they're giving and then all these different things that we're gonna talk about in just a little bit. I wanna show you guys how to maximize this tool because there's a lot of things that we can do with it. The most important thing that we wanna focus on is we wanna go into each specific factor and see what's important for this specific keyword. So we see that the amount of words that have been written on the URLs that are ranking for this specific keyword definitely have some type of positive correlation. But if we take a look at other factors, let's take a look at image alt tags, for example. So it looks like the amount of exact keywords that people have included in this specific SERP has a really high correlation with their position in the search results. So if we click into it, we're going to see that the graph is going to change now. And now we're looking at the orange line, right? So the orange line is showing a positive correlation that definitely we should have between two and three exact keywords in our image alt tags. That's the guidance that we're looking for for this specific keyword. Another thing we can look into, for example, is our H2s. So we can see that there's also a very high correlation for the number of exact keywords that have been added to our H2s. So I'm actually gonna go in and unselect words because it is getting slightly messy and I'm gonna unselect exact image alt tags and look at what we see, right? So we see that there's definitely a really obvious po positive correlation and we are looking to try and add around two exact keywords for our H2 headings, right? So it's incredible to take a look at all these different factors from a bird's eye view. Instead of going into the SERP and looking at your competitors page by page and writing down all the different things that could be influencing their positioning in the search results. So another thing that we can do, which is really interesting, I'm gonna unselect exact keywords. I'm gonna go back to words. Another thing that we can do is we can play around with this chart. So right now we see that the graph is displaying averages, right? So this is between the first and the 10th ranked position, the 11th to the 20th and so on and so forth. I can actually unselect this and what we're gonna see is the individual competitors that we have and the amount of words that they've written, right? A second thing that we can do is if I say, hey, you know what? I actually just wanna zone in to the top 10. I can just filter that out. And now all I'm seeing is the amount of words that my competitors have written that are in the top 10 results. So this is great to see those trends, great to see from above, what is everybody else doing? Another thing that we can do, which is really great, is I can actually decide, hey, you know what? I'm gonna exclude all pages and I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna select the specific competitors that I know 
that they write great content and I'm gonna select them and because I only wanna compare myself to those people that have the best content out there, right? So I can actually select all the competitors that I wanna show. Now I have a much more reduced version and I'm seeing only what I want to see. I do wanna talk about this bottom section a little bit more. The neat trick that I was talking about before is we can actually take a URL that we have and we can paste it right into Surfer and compare our website to our competitors. So let's do that. I actually have uh, this old test website that I have. I'm gonna paste this in and I'm gonna hit compare. So it's gonna be interesting to see the breakdown of each specific factor in comparison to what I've written. Cool, so what it's gonna do is, we see if we see this flat line down here, it's gonna show us that this is exactly where we are. So this, for example, is the amount of words that I've written for that test blog that I wrote. So it's showing us where we are in comparison to our competitors and to the people that we've selected. I'm actually gonna include all pages and I'm gonna hit the averages again. And now I'm gonna see that, hey, I've actually written a decent amount, but I'm sure there's a bunch of other factors um, that I haven't hit properly. As you can see, I'm ranked 62nd, so there's definitely a lot that I can improve. If I find different factors and I go out and change them, and now I've updated and made those changes to my website, all I have to do is click this refresh URL button, and now Surfer is going to go out and find that updated version of my website and see how well I'm doing after that. So this compare feature is great because I can go in and I can compare absolutely everything. There's other tabs that I want to look at down here at the bottom. There's keywords, so Surfer is showing us common ranked keywords how many overlapping pages, what are the relevance of all of these keywords, common questions as well, that we can include popular words and popular phrases, right? So these are 30 words that are used on a page at least twice sorted by the number of occurrences, right? So it's giving us specific words and the density and the count. So this is great to see from a bird's eye view and say, hey, you know what? These are the words that are being used. These are the phrases that are being used. I should probably use these a little more. So there's all these different sections. I'm not gonna go into all of them because I actually prefer the way Surfer presents this information in the audit, which is actually part three of the complete Surfer SEO tutorial. So if you're interested in that video, you can find it right here. Otherwise, here's an important video to check out for the SEO trends for this year. See you guys in the next one.